Hello everyone, I have today here for you guys a match I had very recently in the Global League with the one and only Starflash. Uh, Starflash is easily one of my favorite players on the site. He is, of many, <laughs> the favorite player. And he is a really, really top player. He plays very well, very fast. I don't think there is any other player that can play to its to, to their fullest capacity in such a short amount of time. The only other ones that I can think of are maybe Poland. Um, and, and, and that's probably it. I mean, but Poland sometimes takes some time. He, 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 will, he will move plan a little bit here or there. He'll, he'll take some time on some turns, but Starflash, yeah, as soon as he sees that little red number in the your turn page, he's, he sees a little one or two or something, he go, clicks it, does the turn in five minutes. I don't think he even uses the move planner that much. He already has it in his head. Uh, it, it is insane how fast he can already get to the maximum potential uh, that he can. So that is extremely admirable. All of, all, all of us, you know, mortals need to spend hours on the move planner, maybe think about a turn, you know, plan it, and, and then maybe go to sleep, come back the next day, look at it, be like, mm, okay, is that, is that good or not? You know, like, we have to reconsider a few times. Starflash, no. He, he doesn't need to reconsider. He sees it, he knows. Uh, he has a very clear set um, what his strategy is going to be and already sees the tactics available and what are the best tactics um, that can happen. He also knows the roles almost by heart, you know, it, it's just insane. So, uh, needless to say, I admire him a lot. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, we have this match and the funny, funny context of this match is that um, I hadn't queued a standard Global League match in a very long time. My last games were against Grim Guy in Scorpion Operation and uh, Mastro's Alt, also on the same map. And they ended months ago. And so I, I haven't played Global League Standard since then because, to be honest, Standard uh, Global League kind of stresses me out. <laughs> it's, you know, I, I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but it's just, there's so much to process. It's like, you know, you have the lights on and there's just every single unit you see, there's like multiple branches of possibilities. And it's just, it, it gets very complicated very fast now. I do like standard live for that sense. Uh, Cause it's like, you don't have that much time to think anyway. So you just kind of send stuff, commit and that's it. But in global league you have days. So it, it's just, it's just a lot for me. So I try not to queue that much. And after all those months, I was like, okay, I will queue another global league standard game. And who do I get when I get queued? Yeah, um, it's not that I don't like getting matched against Starflash. I, I enjoy playing against him a lot. I'm just terrified of playing against Starflash. <laughs> He's just so good and so aggressive and you just cannot spare any mistake, really. Uh, at the top level, I mean, I guess you could say I'm just terrified of playing against any top level player because you, you just have to play so sharp that one mistake can just ruin the match for you. So you just have to be very, very careful all the time. Um, but I always learn so much from playing against Starflash and other top players. Um, I have played against Starflash a lot of times and he almost always beats me. I've only been able to beat him just a few times. Uh, easily 90 or 80% of the times he beats me. <laughs> it's insane. So this was just another chance for me to give it a try, maybe make him sweat a little bit. And so now that I'm done throwing flowers at Starflash, I'm not sure if that uh, expression applies in English as well. It's a Spanish expression that we have here. Fla throwing flowers as in like compliments, you know? Uh, anyways, um, a little bit more context about the match. I hope I don't ramble on too much. I'll, I'll get to a game in a second. Uh, is that, you know, it is a tier one match and I wasn't sure what to pick. Well, actually, I was right. I wanted to pick Hawk, but then Starflash messages me because he didn't want to have a mirror matchup. And so we were like, okay, so what do you want to go? Oh, I wanted to go Hawk, and he also wanted to go Hawk, but to avoid a mirror matchup, I was like, oh, okay, maybe let's not do a Hawk mirror. And so we started kind of throwing ideas around, maybe doing another tier or something, and, and started to also maybe do like some mind games of like, oh yeah, I'm gonna pick Hawk. And so then Starflash would pick Sasha and then I would just like 
secretly pick Von Bolt, you know, to sort of counter uh, his counter pick. Um, all, all, all those things were thrown around and it was a lot of fun and games uh, but eventually I just decided now nah, it's, it's fine I'll, I'll just pick Hawk you can pick Sasha and he was like okay I could have still gone and picked uh, Von Bald but that would have been kind of I don't know kind of toxic I don't know <laughs> so I decided to stay true to my word and pick Hawk so I have a Hawk against Sasha match and I know what a lot of uh, you guys out there think about this matchup it's like oh Hawk is dead immediately Hawk is dead and I would definitely, well, not definitely, but I would somewhat agree to that in, depending on the map. If it's a small map, I think Sasha definitely has the upper hand and it would be very, very hard for Hawk to ever get a power out. Um, there's some things about this matchup though, uh, that I realized during this match. And we can, we can get to that when, when that time uh, arrives. But anyways, I was not gonna give up after the seal selection. I was like, okay, that's fine. I'm Hawk against Sasha. I'm gonna have a strategy in mind. I'm gonna have a plan. And my plan was not to do the classic thing that many people think you're supposed to do when you stall. And maybe I am guilty of saying that in one of my, my guides of like, you're the stall your CEO, you know, try to stall. I mean, there's some truth to that. No, like if you're the stall your CEO, you do want to take it to a stage where it benefits your CEO. And that is definitely part of the plan here. But not from the very beginning. So there's something very important. You, you, I feel like to play a stall CEO, you don't want to stall from the very, very beginning. Because your stall your CEO is good because what? Because it has a good power, right? But if you never fight and you just stall from the very beginning and you have no charge and you're very far from your power, then you don't have a threat. So you're very far from your threat. Say you're Eagle, for example, against the Max. And this has happened to me before. I've learned from that. If you're very far from your lightning strike, then you can't threaten with your lightning strike. And you can stall and stall, but maybe Max is like, you know, eating away your cities and has like, you know, 20%, 30%, 40% more income than you. It's like, fine, maybe you can build up to 200k uh, unit value, but Max will have 300k and the amount of pressure that Max can put out is insane. And if you have no charge that he might get a power or a super and just wreck your entire army, then you get lightning strike fine but like with what you know so there is there's something you know with that approach that I did not want to do again and my my thinking was I'm gonna force an attack I'm gonna force aggression and force a reaction from the aggressive CEO in this matchup which is Sasha so I was gonna try to put pressure as much as I could as if I was playing an aggressive CEO you know put as much pressure as I can force very reactive builds from him and at the same time that will reduce the pressure on my weakest area of the map that was the general strategy so let's look at the map um after we've talked about that uh this is this map is called a hope for lorne is by is made by our amazing voice of akasha great great map it is one of the bigger standard maps you know, it's, it's very large it takes vehicles like two or three turns to get into the action. Um, it's pretty high income, uh, sort of. I think it's like around, tw it's 20 something, 22, 24, tw something like that, uh, split income. There's an uneven amount because there's one city in the middle, uh, kind of breaking one of the, the rules of map design there, but uh, this map works really great. This map is amazing. So the dynamic of the map is that you have your two base over here, and then you have your one base, one airport over here, right? And there's this huge mountain range. You can see it's all connected. Like, it is a very long mountain range. There is no way for vehicles from this base to ever connect with your two base army. Maybe you think, oh yeah, I can still connect it through this way, right? No, you can't. <laughs> Believe me, you can't do that because the two base of the opponent is right here. This two base will move over here with this base in the first turn. And this means that that is pointing at this area right here. This is the area that you would think you would be able to switch around. Yeah, you, this base will never be able to connect vehicles over there. Trust me. Um, this base will always be sending tanks over here and then it can decide whether to go more towards the one base or towards the center. Usually it will, uh, a tank will go like one turn, two turns it will be like, you know, hugging the mountain over here. This area, let's call it the pivot because it is a pivot. Um, 
a pivot is an area where you can decide whether to go to one area or to another one. It's a very important area of the map. So it's like one turn, two turns, and then you can decide, okay, do I go attack the one base or do I go towards the middle? Or you could even like, you know, if you go towards the middle, you can also, from the middle, you can attack that pivot. And so then you can maybe join the two base army that if you like, sent all towards the middle, plus the one base one airport and try to overrun the two base army of your opponent and push them back from the pivot, you know, push them back over here very defensively. And then that army will just like go down, take over the middle, maybe go for an HQ or something. But just like overall win the brawl, you know, have a very big fight and just surpass them in unit value and unit count from there. So a lot can go in this map. It is very hard to overcome the one base. I would not recommend ever to try to overrun it. It is very, very far for the two base to reinforce. And it's very easy to just start doing medium tanks if you know if you're panicking just start meeting, making medium tanks you have the airport also that is almost impossible to overrun there's these mountains so if there's ever an infantry here you can just make a copter an anti-air will never be able to hit it um, it is very hard for a copter to get all the way to over there to like try to attack that airport so yeah there's just a lot that goes on in this map the main contested areas are going to be this like the comm tower area with these two cities uh, sometimes this city can also become under threat. Uh, it is very close to the one base though, so it is kind of tricky. This city is also very contested at the beginning and somewhat in the mid game as well. And then you have these three cities in the middle. So th there's definitely like, a lot. Right? You got this three, this one, these three, and the mirror ones. So, let's... Um, I think we can get right into the match. If I forget something, I will always mention it in the middle. And so, already in the beginning, there was a lot that I was thinking. I had planned a lot for this match because you cannot get into a match like this and expect to be a challenge unless you plan. Well, and unless you're Starflash, of course, because Starflash already knows. This guy, he's, he's had so much experience playing that he knows what are the possible and best openings on every map. Not only on, on every map, but also which one is best for player one and which one's better for player two to that level. Like, <laughs> it's, it's insane. And so here's something that I had thought very hard on, because there is some base delay openings that you can do here to speed up a tank deployment. There is um, day three recon harassment from the two base. You know, you go like this and then you can go towards the one base or towards the middle. I wasn't sure what he was going to go for. Again, I wanted to go for a more like, you know, putting pressure approach. So I, I, I didn't want to just be spamming tanks here on the one base because if I did, if I do that, then his army would just go towards the middle and do what I was talking before. I was just like uh, joining over here and crushing my two base side. So I wanted to be putting pressure and forcing reaction on his one base, which is the classic thing that you would do on this map. And so I was trying to predict that he was going to do a day three recon. That, that was what I was uh, expecting and predicting. He tends to do it a lot on this map. So I thought he would do that as here as well. So usually people will go back here to capture this city first, get that faster income. Um, but I move planned that day three recon and I decided to skip that and go for this city and then chain onto this city. Because by the time the day three recon arrives and is able to hit this city, this guy will already be finished. It will still get a free hit, but it, at least it will ensure the, the city capture. If it would have gone back and then the second one goes and starts this chain, then the recon could interrupt this capture. And I didn't want to allow that. So he doesn't go for any base delay. He goes for the faster income. And here I go for that chain. We're gonna go get the base. I also don't go for any base delay because it wasn't necessary to get any tank. Um, it, it just wouldn't affect anything and I just wanted to have you know, more infantry. It's gonna go for that back capture. The infantry's gonna go here. I mean, usually this, this guy goes over here. You know, I got the two chain. And there goes the day three recon that we were talking about. This recon will move somewhere around here. I think this is the best spot. And here you go, get some catcher. Uh, captures go for the back one and you know actually something that i have thought after the match had finished is that maybe this infantry could instead delay this capture and just jump right straight to this one finish it and then go backwards and that would mean that it would speed it up by another turn making the recon not be able to get a hit here but 
at the time I hadn't thought about that, <laughs> but oh well. And so here comes the day three recon. And now I have enough for a tank. Star Flash, because he made the recon, he doesn't have enough for a tank. Um, go get the city, go get that one. This guy, there, there's some capture phase uh, routes that I think is very important to know on this map. On any map, of course, but uh, this city guy, like the one that goes backwards, is, always wants to go here and then jump onto this mountain and then start this capture. It's very important. And I could have made a tank here, no? I could have made a tank on the one base, which would make it uh, defend this infantry. Because this recon can move over here. And then I finish the capture and then it hits me right here. And if I make a tank on the next turn, it won't be able to reach because it would go two, four, six. It would be one tile away from hitting that recon. And one tile away is one turn away. So there would be a free hit. So pretty much I am giving up a free hit by building the tank here. But in my mind, I was like, that's fine. I kind of wanted to have the tank on the two base to, again, no, the strategy is, it's all about the strategy. <laughs> the trying to push onto the one base of, of Star Flash. So here goes the recon. Um, another thing is that if I would have made the tank here, the recon could have just gone towards over here and maybe start harassing these captures over here. And it would, it would probably be really annoying because then I would have to make another tank over here. Well, I mean, which would be okay, but it would just be a little bit late, I think. I, I would have to kind of calculate the, the time, but I'd rather just get on with a match. So yeah, I am gonna give up a free shot here, pretty much. He's gonna make a tank on the two-way side. There goes the capture. And uh, something that I, I forgot to mention is that uh, you're gonna start noticing how the extra funds that Sasha gets start to pile up very quickly. <laughs> like, I knew that getting into this match. I haven't had that many tier one matches, to be honest that are not Von Bald mirrors anyways. <laughs> um, but you can definitely start to notice the buildup of that extra income by, by Sasha. It is very, very noticeable. At first it might seem very little, but all of, all, all of a sudden it's gonna start to be like an, uh, an extra half a vehicle, you know, an extra tank or something. And that extra half vehicle, one tank, at, you know, at, by day 10, it can make a big difference because all of a sudden you are trying to attack with two tanks and they, they can defend with two tanks or they can attack with three tanks and you can only defend with one or two. Like that extra, that extra vehicle really makes a difference in that Sasha can start a fight and have a positive trade without you being able to do anything because you're just very limited with the income, right? So here goes the recon. It is going to get a shot out. I do make a tank on the one way side to, because, you know, I have to, because or else this recon is gonna keep getting harassment here and I don't want it to get too much value. Here goes the tank. There goes the, the mountain capture that I was talking about. Um, you also have like a fresh one goes here and then goes over to this mountain. There's these captures also over here that are also pretty important. Um, you have this guy will either go for the city or you can go for the airport and now we're gonna get a tank on the one base side so as to defend from this tank so it doesn't give free damage huh? and you're gonna see these guys like they, they jump the one from the city jumped over here and then it's gonna jump over here and then the one before which was this one went from here over here and then it's gonna go here and the next one this guy is gonna jump on the mountain again um, although it looks like counterintuitive, but yeah, it jumps on the mountain to then jump over here and then go for this city. It's just perfectly in range. So there's a, there's those little um, oh wait there's those little things in the capture phase that are very important. I, I felt like uh, while playing this game, and then you have uh, this little guy who is the infantry that captured this city, right? It went over here and then it went over here. And at first I thought, okay, this guy is gonna start this chain, but I had seen. Well, actually, I was thinking of going, just like skipping these and going for this mountain city, which is very contested. And then I thought that Star Flash had actually done that. I was like, okay, it is definitely a very um, worthwhile decision to make. Because these two are very safe. Yeah, you would get more income a little bit quicker, but sometimes you just really want to secure those contested cities. You know, as, as I did secure this one, um, if you skip here, the, the just the timings of it is going to mean that this guy is going to be able to finish this capture completely for free like no need to even cover it 
just from the timing of this infantry and this tank. So that's what I do. I do. I go over there. Tank is gonna sort of go towards the middle. I mean, it is pointing at that infantry in the in the middle of the map. Um, but it is it is in the pivot. Like it is in this area, so it is able to kind of cover here and also this area. So I'm just keeping the the decisions flexible. My plan was not to go towards the middle at all. I just wanted to keep it contested as much as I can, like try to keep these neutral. I wasn't planning on capturing them, I just wanted to keep them neutral and invest everything over here. Like the two base just going really hard on the one base side of Starflash. And there goes a little mountain guy as well towards the middle. Tank gonna come in, the guy's gonna move away um, from this recon. And instead of going for a capture here, which would be interrupted by, by the recon for sure, I just decide to instead go for the airport. This guy's gonna go for that city. And I just keep these guys out of range of the recon. It's not, it's not gonna show here because it's, it doesn't read the tank as blocking, but it doesn't reach. So these guys are safe. Um, because 100% I feel like Starflash would just sacrifice the recon to get another infantry damage and it would be very worth it. You know, this is the one base. Look at how few infantry there are and how many captures that still have to be uh, captured and then contested. So uh, I think recon is very strong on this map, honestly. I had considered going for it, but I decided just not to. It was just going to delay my tank deployment and I just kind of wanted to keep a tank chain going over here, which is what I'm going to start trying to do. So he gets this city, he gets that one. The tank is going to do the same thing as I do, just hugging the, the pivot area, the, the little mountain over here. I'm going to start this capture, which is totally on, uh, how do you say, uninterruptible by me. Rigo is just going to run away because it can't attack anything. Uh, I was thinking maybe it would like sit on the comp, or maybe sitting on the city but then he would have to bring this tank to cover it. But if it did, then I would be able to get a free hit with this tank against this guy. So this tank was definitely forcing a little bit of this. It, it, it was forcing the recon to pull back. And then there you go, I get this capture and you can see now this tank this tank doesn't reach and this infantry doesn't reach. So I'm gonna get this city. So that's, that's nice. I'm gonna start the capture on the airport, the city. These guys are gonna start these captures. Again, the guy on the mountain, same thing as Starflight is doing. I mean, to be honest, I was also like, I was like, oh, that's interesting. And then I look at Starflash and he was already doing it. I was like, yeah, makes sense. <laughs> he, he knows, he knows the, the correct uh, capture phases. And I'm gonna sit on the comm tower because I didn't want the recon to sit on there and just, uh, just be annoying. Like uh, maybe I shoot at it, you know, and then the tank can shoot from the comm tower. So yeah, just trying to avoid, just trying to secure these tiles, these important tiles. And I make, so there is something that the recon did do because of the repairs that it cost me. Like you can see, it's, I'm 200 away from another thousand funds, which would allow me to make infantry double tank. But instead, I had to resort to making infantry tank artillery, which I'm kind of fine with because I did want to use the artillery to go and attack the comm tower area. I wanted to like, I like to use artillery in the two base side to just to siege, you know, like when you see, like, you know, when they used to siege castles or whatever, you know, like you can fire from, from, uh, from afar and like really threaten a lot and force fights, force unfavorable trades to the opponent. So that is what I'm going to do with this artillery or what I'm going to try to do. Here goes the infantry pointing at that city, ready to start that capture. We're gonna start this chain over here, and we're also gonna start the comm tower cap over here, and the airport, and this guy's gonna be in range to maybe like hit this guy or something. And brings the recon towards the middle. Um, it kind of points at all these cities, so that's really annoying. And the tank sits on the city without support from another tank, so I could hit it, but I don't have the comm tower yet. It is three star terrain. He would have the comm tower later, so eh. It would be an even trade. We would just both lose a tank, and I, I don't think that would be favorable for me as Hawk when Sasha is the one that has more vehicles, right? So, yeah, I just I wanted to avoid that. So, I was, I'm was i gonna check that. I'm just making sure that I have the microphone on because I literally recorded this match like a day or two ago, and 
and you'll probably you know, you'll see how long this video is and yeah that, that is how long it took me to record it and then i realized i had the microphone off so <laughs> this is my second attempt at recording this match just just stuff that happens when you're trying to create content and so um oh there you go so i finished these captures over here i'm gonna get this city i start the little chain over here just bundle up all of these infantry, kind of like blocking any interrupts from the recon. But most of those are just in range to start these captures. Uh, again, my plan wasn't to get them, but I do want to pose the threat that I am gonna gonna go for those cities. And I'm actually gonna delay this city capture to get the comp tower safely because there's nothing in range to interrupt it, right? All of these are just one tile away. So if I don't get it this turn or yeah, if I don't start the capture this turn, I will probably never get it because all of these guys are going to be moving forward and are going to be in range. So, sometimes you gotta do that. You gotta delay your, your captures to ensure certain contested stuff. And I go for something very bold. And this kind of puts into evidence my whole plan. Like, I was nowhere, like, I had nowhere in mind to, like, um, go for the middle and I just wanted to go very aggressive on the one base side and so I sent this tank and attacked this infantry on the comp tower to interrupt it and you might think whoa that's a that's a very bad idea because then he's gonna move this guy off and then attack from the comp tower with the extra defense from that tile and against a tank on the road and it's like yeah that is a very bad trade it, you know in a vacuum but there is no tanks coming like there is he, there's two infantries here not even a tank like this is not even a tank because in that case it could shoot and then bring the tank to support it to counter my my response no there's just infantry so if he does attack from the comm tower then that means that he won't be able to get the comm tower he's not you know he's not gonna be capping it and i will so i will be like 120 firepower against just 100 and that'd be pretty huge and Sasha really needs that comm tower to get to 110 and then uses the power and just becomes like Von Bolt, you know, gets the 120 and also 110 defense. Um, there's just a, a very interesting dynamic in this matchup where Hawk I, is the only CO that he can use is his day to day of the extra 10 firepower plus a comm tower gets to 120, is able to take KO stuff, uh, only applies to Sasha and Hawk as well. <laughs> That's why Hawk mirrors are interesting. But, um, yeah, I think that was it. That's, that's all I wanted to say. So moving on, <laughs> uh, I do go for this because he either has to decide to interrupt the comp tower or he will attack from the planes and then I can kill that tank. And so, yeah, I will get first struck. It will leave me at four, but then I can kill a tank. So I will be ahead in half a, a vehicle. Um, and I'm also just kind of forcing the fight over here. Um, I'm not really afraid of this tank or this recon because I have these two guys backing it up. This tank is just out of range of this tank. I was trying to be careful because maybe he goes for first strike here and then first strikes this tank and then I can no longer take out this tank and that can be a problem. So just making sure of that. And this tank also is going to sit on the city to just delay and be annoying for this uh, infantry. So he's going to get the comm he's going to get that city, um, he's going to get that one. He's going to bring these guys close to the comm tower, brings the artillery, the tanks, all three tanks. He's going to start that capture and decides not to attack, uh, but he's going to block here so I he can't interrupt that capture. So another use of the recon. I still don't think I would go for any interrupt, but still, it's still putting pressure. The recon is still forcing me to have a tank always in range. Does go for the little tank attack there from the planes instead of the comp tower and joins here, like cap and joins. So now I I was kind of thinking like okay maybe I can I can attack with this tank and then attack again with this tank if it was a five and then I would keep delaying that comp tower and potentially deny it because then next turn my infantry would be in range to assist. Um, but no, he decided to join to ensure that capture. So. I do get that city, get the comm tower, and I, I'm just gonna go and kill that tank. Get those captures going, finish these. And I'm gonna start this capture and interrupt the one in the middle. All these tanks, 
just coming in and you know hugging this pivot area because they can support this and support the middle artillery same thing i could have gone here but it doesn't really do anything here so might as well just have it here be more a little bit more flexible and i'm gonna make a copter the fastest as possible make a copter there's no anti well yeah he he did make an anti -air. he knows the timings it's very important that he makes this anti -air because this means that um, it's gonna move two four six and then two four six so it doesn't attack the comp tower it's just one tile away from attacking the comp tower but this means that um so in the area of the comp tower maybe this comp tower the city the city a copter you know makes an enter i make a copter brings the enter i bring in the copter i could get a free hit with a copter anywhere uh like in this area of course in the within one turn then he brings the entire and then i wouldn't be able to attack anything over here with my copter because then the entire would be in range but if he doesn't make that entire this turn like the one that he did it um that means that you know this copter would then move here and i would be able to get a free attack somewhere around here in this area before the entire could reach so that is a pretty big deal and I do the same thing. I also I make a copter and I make an anti-air because he also finishes the capture. So I want to have the same thing. I want to be able to um, to keep attacking in the comp tower area. Not this city, right? Like this city is the only one that's safe from the anti-air. But this comp tower is and this city would be secured by this early anti-air. And he decides to go for some attacks over here. I'm gonna finish some captures. Gets the comp tower makes a copter and it's gonna sacrifice that infantry to interrupt this which is really annoying and gets attacked there he's also gonna uh, kill that infantry and start a capture on the comm tower also brings artillery same tile same I, I, again like he could have done here but this one is just more flexible makes another artillery infantry well i guess he made it artillery because they don't have enough funds for a tank and it's gonna bring these guys and support over here brings the recon to heal up it keeps the tank so somewhat flexible and so you know i could have made a tank here maybe but i just didn't have the funds i could only make a copter anti-air infantry infantry if i make a tank here i don't have the anti-air um i guess i could have made a tank instead of the copter uh, i don't know but the copter it's gonna be good. It's, you know, having more infantry is good. And so, let's see. I wanna interrupt this capture and go for some hits over here. Um, I'm gonna join these two tanks to get some extra funds because of the of what I want to build. Bring the artillery, kill that off, start the capture. And so now, this is the what I like to call the siege. I'm sieging the, the comp tower. And there's no way for him to break through and attack my artillery with vehicles because there's only this tank in range and it would be not good to attack here and then gets shot back. And I am going to completely interrupt that capture and get a, a first tank strike. This might look not very good because there is more tanks so I will get my tank taken out and it just, it just becomes very tricky because i'm gonna start losing units here i'm gonna lose this tank for sure and then this copter you know the the tank the anti-air is countering that copter so but i just want to maintain the comp tower i don't want him to have two the two comp towers it does seem like from what we're playing into the strategy that we're both playing into which is going really hard onto the opponent's one base area and like really attack the comp tower area is that the, these comp towers are going to be flipped eventually you know and so I just did not want him to have both comp towers. And then all of a sudden it's like 120 stats against my basic 110. Like, yeah, no, no, thank you. You know, over the over the fact that he has more funds and everything. Like, if you look at the unit value, like, he like he has more stuff, right? <laughs> has uh, 3k more income, which comes from the extra, uh, you know, from the extra income that Sasha gets and this extra city. And it's just the, the buildup of, of the extra vehicles. So he's gonna get that kill there with a the copter. 
I, I went for these attacks to just injure the infantry. They're, they are going to become very scarce here in the in the one base area, so that is important. And he is also very um, strapped for infantry on the two base area. There's only these three that are healthy, so that is something that is going to be important. He goes for that kill there. He's gonna take KO my tank, bring the artillery, start the capture, bring the anti-air. He's gonna do market crash to completely wipe out my charge. So yeah, and goes for an attack there onto the tank for with the extra stats. You know, it does give me a little bit of charge, but gets those extra stats. Gets a shot onto my artillery and over there as well. Actually, does two damage to my artillery. Pretty strong, but. I don't really care if infantry hit my artillery, it, they'll do what, 1, 2 damage and the artillery is going to be at 8 HP, they still pack a very big punch against tanks, so I'm fine with that. And then you get to take out the infantry from the one base and all of a sudden they have no infantry, so yeah, I'm like totally fine with that. Um, and I, I had to interrupt that capture because it was at 8 and he could just like keep attacking. And I didn't want to be devoting too much resources into the middle again. Like I was just trying to keep them neutral. I like if I could get away with it, like fine, you know, that'd be awesome. But he's not gonna allow that. And I didn't want to invest too much. And it looks like he doesn't want to invest too much either. Like just keeping a little bit of a, of a threat. He's kinda of doing the same thing, just an infantry here capturing is gonna force some interaction and devoting some resources from my two base side into the middle, which are not gonna be devoted over here. Now it is my turn, and if you look at my one base, I only have two copter. Well, I only have one copter in range to attack. And I will do something that a lot of people will cringe at for sure. <laughs> I do get an artillery shot here into the tank. Uh, we're gonna attack this infantry instead of capturing. Just gonna injure all his infantry and take out that tank, bring that anti air, stop that capture. Um, pretty much here, this artillery cannot be hit at because. Oh, this little tiny wall made here this copter cannot reach this tank cannot reach and all the injured infantry means that he can't take out any of these things maybe he could like ko this guy and then take out this tank and then copter hits there something like that uh even even worse would be like copter kills here and then tank attacks the entire that would be huge so yeah, I really did not want to, my anti to die. And here is the cringy part, where I used my copter to attack the artillery. Um, it, it wasn't purpose, like, the idea was to attack. I wasn't sure if to attack the tank or the artillery. I know it's gonna die, but I just wanted to inflict as much damage as possible on the one base side, so as to just weaken the, the forces. And I'm gonna go for some infantry attacks here, which leaves only two healthy infantry in the area bring this tank heal up this guy and i'm gonna get the other little copter attack there um so he can only kill one of him so i mean it's not gonna be a, a beautiful trade for me you know doing some damage on artillery and losing a full copter but it is gonna slow down i could have you know if you hit the artillery then you can make a medium tank but he had another artillery so it's like, uh, I'm not sure if a medium tank is good. And if you make a medium tank, then he can just send everything else up here and just crush this side. So it's very tricky. Um, I decided to interrupt here. I just don't want to give this up for free. And I still have these guys in range to keep protecting. And I decided to make tank, anti-air, tank. I do need an, an anti-air because I have a feeling that he will be copter spamming. So I just need to have more anti -airs. And... I think I think attacking the artillery is probably the most valuable just because of the just the the nature of of the map, no? Because having an artillery here set up is very easy to protect it against the one base side and it's very strong as you'll see this artillery is you know doing a lot of damage. Um, like this tank literally uh, oh it, did it attack? Where did it go? Oh I killed it, yeah. So this is the, the, the new tank, right? So anyways, this artillery is definitely deterring any attacks from the tanks and it will take out tanks. So it will get a lot of value. It already got value. Um, and so attacking the artillery will mean that his force will be a little bit less um, strong. And there's still tanks that I have to deal with, right? But 
this is like in range of my airport, very, very close to my base, so I can still kind of carry it abroad and if, just by lowering the value of the army, I can maybe eventually retake this area. Especially with the airport being so close, you can just copter spam. He is going to, to just clean up the units and block off this copter from interrupting this comm tower, so that comm tower is 100% guaranteed to get. He's going to sacrifice his infantry to reduce the damage of this guy. Tries to get some damage more onto my artillery, but doesn't get it. And actually doesn't go for any more attacks because of this. Um, because he would lose a, a copter, lose a tank and stuff. But he's going to make copter, just another copter, just copter spamming. And double tank on the two base side. He's going to kill that infantry, just going to cap and join. So pretty much guaranteeing this, uh, unless I devote like two infantry and bring these two guys over here towards the right. So you can start seeing the disparity in unit value. Like I am behind with like 26,000 unit value. Um, only behind on one city, but also maybe because I sacked the, you know, the copter and a tank. <laughs> that obviously adds up. Um, like I had gotten the first little half tank trade when I interrupted the Comptar with the tank, so that was nice, but now I'm kind of giving up that by attacking into this. But I just didn't want to give up on the one base side. I don't want to stall, just, oh, I'm going to stall and give up stuff. No, I want to brawl, keep the income as fairly even as possible. And eventually I'll get a power and hopefully stabilize. That's the, that's the thing that I want to do. Also, the more, the, the more that uh, Sasha starts using powers, the more expensive it gets. When she's using a power, she doesn't get charged. So eventually, you can get a power with Hawk. And getting a power against Sasha, oof, that is very devastating. And so, I am going to sacrifice another copter just to get a shot onto this tank. I attack with this tank here, and I attack with a new one over here. So, not going to allow that. I, I also get the interrupt here with a tank, actually, because um, there's no tank protecting it. And I didn't really need it over here. I, I don't really need the tank. Um, but another thing is that I don't have any healthy infantry because he did the little sacrifice there. I don't have any 10 HP infantry, so I can't start a capture this turn with like a very threatening one. You know, you need a 10 HP one to be a threatening capture. So I am going to pull back from this area, finish off that guy, just heal up, wait for these guys that are full HP to be in range, like especially this one. Now it's gonna be in range for next turn. So I'm just gonna pull back, regroup, you know, just wait for more units. It's fine. You can you can do this. Don't be afraid of retreating and regrouping, waiting for a for the next turn to have a better attack. And just having more units having next turn I will have two entires in range of the comp tower if he decides to attack with copters. And I'll have more infantry to support and stuff. So that is important. And I can start the capture and then just keep joining with these guys. So that is very important. Um, there's also kind of, uh, because I went through all these tank attacks, there's, there's kind of a lack of tank numbers from Starflash to deal with my tanks. It does have artillery though, so that is gonna be tricky and just like unit count. So he does get the double comment tower. So this is what I didn't want, but he he gets it. He was able to interrupt my comm tower and just with these amount of vehicles, if I kept going, then that means that I I would get into a into a fight that I probably wouldn't win, and he would he still was able to get this counter even after all my efforts he was still able. I think there would be some um, like it would be plausible to maybe make an artillery and then in two turns you can uh, like lock it from somewhere here maybe over here in the city and then you can lock the counter. That's probably uh, an approach worth considering but it was too late <laughs> i was going for more tanks and copters so it is what it is he does have the two comm towers that sucks it was and he takes my copter of course now he's just gonna retreat this is definitely not something that i wanted that match to get into i just i wanted to avoid this at all costs but he was able to get it anyways so now it's two comm towers that went zero um so it's gonna get tricky now that he gets that, he can either maybe keep pushing forward to maybe flip this or this, or he can just be happy with this and just shift over to the top 
or twist the middle and towards the top and kind of crush my numbers and he's, he's gonna use the market crash to just train the uh, my charge and again I'm not capturing so he doesn't have to fight he kind of puts the a copter over here in the mountain range so now these are also pointing towards the middle which is a big deal now my antares are, are gonna be a little bit split you know they have to cover this area but they also have to cover this area and that's the strength of copters they can just sit over here on these mountain ranges and kind of cover all of this area you know and antares have to be sitting over here to kind of cover both areas it's gonna be very tricky so now I do decide to go for the Com Tower Cap. I join these guys that have a full HP infantry. Because there is something important now with the, the double Com Tower that he has. Um, I, if I'm not wrong, a tank or a, or a copter, they will deal at minimum 90% damage to a infantry on a road. So it would this is a guaranteed kill without a power, just like 125 power. So it'd be very easy. I mean, guaranteed to just kill it in one shot. So it has to be at 10 HP for it not to die. And if he uses a power to get to 130, it would be a roll uh, to get the kill. It would be a favorable roll. It would be like a 60% chance that he gets the one hit KO, but still a roll. And he just used the power, so it would be a little trickier for him to get another power and breakthrough. So I just needed that guy. I just needed a 10 HP guy, and it would uh, force some difficult decisions it wouldn't be as straightforward because if not if they if this was at nine then he can just send a copter infantry ko this guy no then he sends another tank for example ko's that guy at nine and then sends another tank or copter boom hits my artillery and all of a sudden now my attack is not that strong the whole point of the artillery is to be able to do this like have the infantry artillery just behind it just two layers of infantry to defend this guy from afar because if, if there's no artillery, then he can send infantry or tanks, and then I have to be sending the tanks over here to protect the capture. No, you start attacking from these tiles, but now I'm much closer to the airport and stuff. But with artillery, I can be far away. I can be protecting, protecting the capture from far away, and then I keep these vehicles behind that to be protected. And if he does decide to plunge in with the vehicles, then they can counterattack. And I decide to retreat over here. There isn't that many, there's only one healthy infantry, so it's going to take a while and I can start building up some more tanks to start pushing back. This would be probably the last tank that I should build, no more than three, like there is one and a half tanks, there's an artillery, but if I'm able to take out these antares then I can start making copters, which is important. And you'll see he starts to send stuff towards the middle, even this guy is going towards the middle, look, he's like, I'm done with this area. I will, still have, I, I will still have this guy in range to go for this, maybe the airport. Keeps the, the artillery and these infantries and the anti-airs. But everything is going gonna to heal up and go towards the middle to go for, for that other approach that we were talking about in the intro now of like, just going like that, boom. Like from the bottom, joining the two base army with the one base, one airport and just crushing uh, my bigger army uh, pretty much crushing my my chances of going aggressive and losing all kinds of tempo or dictating of the game kind of thing and he does go for an interrupt here keeps everything just out of range of copters I mean copters out of range of antires and here is the classic of like yep I'm just gonna interrupt keep everything in range not gonna allow you to get that comp tower or at least delay it as much as possible this capture was started by an injured infantry, so it's not that big of a threat right now. I kill that guy, I'm gonna capture, I'm gonna block with some healthy infantry and join. And now I'm gonna put a tank in front of the artillery because now he is halfway through the power, right? So he can get a power and it would KO that, that 10 HP guy possibly and then hit my artillery. I just didn't wanna get my artillery injured. And now something that's very tricky is that all these copters that they're sitting over here in the mountain range, they can attack this army from the bottom. So not only I have to protect from the front, I also have to protect all of this part, like the, the spine or what you know, like the back of this army. It is very tricky because if I just put tanks over here, he can just go f and first strike every single tank with his copters, leave them all at like four, you know, and then if all my tanks are injured or dead, then his tanks can just wreak havoc. They can take out my anti-airs, and then his copters will 
Like, I, I will probably kill all those Coptids, but then his tanks will just wreak havoc. And there are more tanks coming over here, you know? So I do have to take care of my tanks. It is a very complicated uh, scenario right here. I go for this little attack. Um, I mean, it wasn't really threatened, but I don't know. I guess I just didn't want to allow it. And just trying to get really aggressive, just positioning uh, as far as I can. Didn't want to allow a very positive trade for this first, first tank attack. Megacopter, I know there's two Antares, but I have more tanks so I can... If I can force attack, I can, I can take them out and then my copter can do stuff. And I already have four Antares over here at the top and I make a tank. I do know that he's coming through the middle now. So I do need to be contesting this. It is... It is gonna be complicated. Having to protect your your death ball or army from multiple angles is complicated. He's gonna start this capture, he's gonna put this artillery to protect it and also in range of this city so I can no longer use this tile as part of my defensive wall. He's gonna bring this guy also to heal up, uh, he's gonna bring these two tanks and the recon. Uh, recon. This recon has just had so much value. Uh, it got one hit but then it's been putting pressure all over the area and he's actually gonna pull back from here I mean this artillery could have gotten a shot now but I think if he gets a shot there's no way for this to to like turtle up without it dying next turn because there's three tanks and one copter so it would be I think pretty fairly easy for all for all these like for my army here to just destroy this and then I can start capturing stuff without much army like he would, he would have to start devoting stuff to defend so he decides like it's fine i'm not gonna get that city nor possibly airport <laughs> i mean you're just never gonna get the airport like don't even try flipping the airport in this map so he's gonna pull back and keep this artillery protecting um and also just in range of the com tower now like uh, he really wants to keep that the double com tower stats and it looks like he's not gonna go for any attack here, at least just yet. But he does go for a tank attack here and it reduces it down to four. I think with double comp tower, it is guaranteed to drop it down to four, which is just enough. It was a five, I just need five more. He jumps it down four. Uh, so I cannot get the comp tower next turn. And just keeps making more in his copter. Tank, just more, more vehicles. Just with the amount of funds that he has, he can keep making those copter double tank infantry builds. I mean, he hasn't been able to, uh, this turn because he's been repairing so much, but you can see, look how many copters. One, two, three, four, five, six copters. One, two, three, four, five tanks. That's 11 vehicles just like on this side and the copters can go attack on any side. And then there's one, two, three more tanks on this side, plus a recon, plus an artillery. There's just way too much like i have four tanks right and he has five he has more tanks over here than i have just ridiculous like if you look at just tank numbers just what five and a half versus five or you know seven if you don't count this one that's four plus three seven and like six copters it's just way too much way too much uh vehicles i mean you can just look at the unit value and it will tell you everything now it's forty thousand extra in and unit value and i do have more unit value over here now that he's been sending stuff i am gonna not make any more tanks if i don't need to because this is more than enough to uh attack this but now that he's pulling back i'm gonna try to you know push back over here because if there are no tanks here then my tanks can go and attack maybe even try to flip this counter you know and like if i can get this one i'll try to get this one or i don't know maybe get both of them you know have 130 stats that'd be awesome but anyways, I will decide to shoot at that tank, cap and join, um, and then I won't send the tank to finish it off because if it does, I'm, I'm gonna, I'll probably lose that tank to two copters or something just to finish off a three HP tank. I don't think it was uh, worth it. And I'm gonna do this little funny anti-air wall here because I'm, I'm gonna really use the mountains as part of my defensive formation. These copters are so strong, they can attack. If I put infantry here or tanks, they can just start attacking or breaking through. But anti-airs 
can wall up, you know, they wall up against copters. And I'm gonna keep these guys here, a little layer of tanks and a little layer of infantry so I can protect these guys. And kind of trying to really force the split of his army. I don't want, like, just stuff to start breaking through and these tanks can start attacking my tanks or the, the anti-airs. And I make another anti and another tank. So now I'm just gonna start really investing over here. Uh, this copter. This image is gonna be in range of the comp tower and I'm making artillery here to start to really try to take this back. Also just because of the funds. Maybe I could have just made an infantry honestly and saved up to make, I don't know, something bigger here. But it's funny because I, I, I felt so limited. I can only make two units. Usually your two bases, your strongest, right? But I can only make two units and he's making like so many. <laughs> he has an airport and, a, and this base and all this army is also coming from the bottom. There's just an overwhelming amount of army. And there's so much I can build from only two bases. This airport cannot assist this area at all. It's just oof. And so let's let's see what, what stuff like it's gonna do now. He's gonna get the city. He's also gonna get this city. So now the the property lead is gonna be ahead in three. He has 25 cities. Or income giving properties, whatever. He sends the Regon to kill an infantry. He is going to sacrifice his anterior, which is gonna give him enough charge to use market crash. So usually you use market crash, you know after you do all your attacks, right? Because you give them charge, you use market crash, drain their charge, and then you buy stuff, end your turn. But what is interesting from this match that I don't think I've seen anyone do before um, is, is Starflash uses it as a way of getting those extra stats. So he sacrifices it, and then he's gonna go for an attack. And you know, we've seen it before in the other turns, he'll he'll use it before going into some vehicle attacks just to get extra charge. And so he decides to plunge in into an all-out attack. He will go for these first strikes on the onto these tanks, these two tanks, which I really didn't want him to, but he decided to. Um, this is just some classic Star Flash play playing. Um, wait. So, remember I was saying this is a 60% chance that a vehicle can kill this with 130 stats. So he does get that in the first one, which he didn't need it because he could have finished it with this guy right here. And then he goes for the next guy and he doesn't get it. I'm not sure what the chances are of two times in a row, 60%. I, I don't know. It, I don't think it really matters because this guy could have finished it, but still. That is unfortunate for him that he couldn't get that kill. Um, because this will change a lot the tactics that he can get. He does go and kill the infantry on the comp tower. He doesn't want me to get the, any comp towers. <laughs> he goes for a very good hit there on the tanks. And because this guy is now dead, he cannot use this tile to finish off my tank. And then he use like, you know, this cop to go to finish off the tank. And then this tank gets a hit on that artillery. And that could have been pretty big. Um, so that was unfortunate for him for not getting that roll and obviously fortunate for me. That means my artillery lives. That means I can keep fighting. And that gave me quite a bit of charge. You know, that gave me two and a half rectangles of charge. In the original games, they're stars. Sometimes I'll say stars, but they look like rectangles here. He sacrifices this infantry to damage this guy a little bit so I can't um, threaten this comm tower cap and just brings everything. Even like the other artillery and anti brings them towards the top. Just gonna all out attack over here. That's the strategy that he's going for. Well, like the, the next step in his strategy, you know, strategies, you, you gotta have multiple like stages of, of approaches. His first was getting this, now he has the middle and now he's gonna try to squash my army at the top. This is the only thing that I have going for, me, for myself. Like, yeah, this can push forward, but again, this is very limited because he can very easily reinforce. And like, the only thing that I, I could possibly get is maybe this comp tower, maybe something like this, like if he just keeps sending stuff. But this, the two base army is definitely gonna stop this. Like, this is a wall right here. You can, you can just never go past this wall from the one base. So I'm gonna take out that entire, finish off that guy. And you will see there's these four copters and these four enters are all healthy and hungry. And they will start 
feasting on these copters. We're gonna get see one and two and three copters go down and get a tank hit there. Look at that charge going up and boom, the last copter and Hawk has enough charge for a power. Oof. And that is huge. I mean, usually you wanna use your super now with Hawk, but Against Sasha, against Sasha, you're just happy to use your power. Now, all the units are damaged by 10% uh, or more, because injured units, if you take out 1 HP, it's more than 10%. Something that I learned recently, thanks to our wise penguin. Um, I also get healed up, so now these 4 HP tanks can actually do some stuff. So it's going to finish that tank. Another one is going to be used to finish that tank. We're also going to, instead of... I could have uh, gone for a capture here and then 2 hit KO this tank like this, but then this copter would be in range, so I didn't want to do that. So I just decided to keep the tanks, or at least the healthy ones, out of range of the airport. Um, finish that guy off, and we're gonna make another end here. And so some tricky thing here, like yeah, I killed all four copters, which is really nice, but there's still two more copters, or three more copters actually. And he'll still be making more and more copters. And there's these two tanks, so I'll probably lose two anti-airs. And I, if I don't kill those tanks next turn, he might kill the other two. There's also a chance that one of these two tanks can actually attack my anti-air. Like they can do one, two, three, four, five, six. And so I have to be very careful of how I can block over here to not allow this tank to attack it. And then I would have just one anterior left. And that'd be one anterior left against two copters. It's probably not good enough. So I go for another tank attack here. Um, there is so many tanks though. Like look, look at how many tanks there are. Insane. And this guy that was at nine is gonna be healed up to 10. So that's awesome because now I can start capturing that comm tower without anything to interrupt it. Tanks are just gonna move out, start to put pressure or something. And I'm gonna make a recon so I can zoom in and like start harassing maybe some infantry and forcing a tank to come in. Uh, just drain some resources from the two base instead of freely sending everything towards the top. But I need to do something because, yay, that's great. I got a power. I, I got to kill four copters. That is great. But he still has more properties than I do. Eventually, you know, I will get this comm tower, but um, I don't want to let him have, you know, a very big income leader. So I need to start making st stuff happen. Like this was great, but it's not enough. It is never enough. Uh, he is gonna injure these two anti-airs. He's gonna take out these two infantry and he can if he wants to take out this infantry, but does not do that. He's gonna take out this guy and he's gonna hit my artillery. And he's gonna first strike that tank and I keep injuring these anti-airs. Gonna get a shot there with that tank, finish it off. Oof. Almost. Brings the artillery and the Regan just gonna block here and just gonna make a big sandwich here of units. Just, and here, uh, some more nice blocking here. And just everything is just being sent upwards. It's insane. Both artillery, this tank also. Uh, just pulling back these guys. Just makes tank tank inventory and another copter. Just another copter, just more and more and more copters. Um, again, there's no way for me to send copters to defend from these copters. I just ha I, I only can make anti -airs. So it's very tricky if I'm making anti -air tank every turn and he makes copter tank and is also sending stuff. Like, he is going to outnumber me. Like, he is outnumbering me. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, complicated stuff. So, more complicated. Got this big sandwich of units. Um, if I decide to attack over here, I will probably just get too overextended for my supporting units to help out too close to the airport and the base so i am going to decide otherwise i'm going to get the counter finally we're going we're to be able to take out those two copters so these two anti got two copter kills and instead of attacking these guys we're just going to attack these guys over here we're going to take out that recon that was blocking take out the artillery injure this infantry uh, Oh, we're gonna sacrifice this tank over here, which will ensure a kill over there, and then I kill that. We're gonna get that kill there, and just bring these guys. Put these infantry in position for these two cities. This one is already in position for this one. Bring the artillery, and just attack the copter. 
And this copter can't do much because it can't go towards the middle because there's this anti-air really annoyingly covering literally everything. So it's not going to get any value if it just flies somewhere over here. So I might as well just keep it over here and force him to make another anti-air. And I decided to make a Neo tank um, because now there isn't that many copters. Um, I killed, what, three copters now this turn. There's one healthy copter and I do have quite a few anti-airs. And he still has a lot of tanks, so I could make double tank, but if there's a lot of tanks, you can just make a Neo tank. Um, the only thing that could counter it would be this artillery, but it is only one. So um, I think once you have a nice composition of anti airs then you can make a Neo tank, and it's really good. And it will help me take it to that stage of like building bigger units and bigger units. You know, if there's a Neo tank and another Neo tank, and they both hit each other, that gives you a ton of charge, and it'd be easier to get another power and he's gonna use market crash look at how much charge he has Oof. and this will be just for the extra stats because he used it at the very beginning of the turn so i am gonna get charged from this he's gonna take out a tank he could be taking out my anteers and i was scared of that um but he, he decides not to this turn he's he's not gonna take out any of my anteers They're, they are all going to live look at what he does he's gonna target all of my tanks Boom, boom, even takes that one out, like, what? That was a 2 HP, what? Anyway, yeah, insane. Um, so now I'm left with very few tanks, and he has way, way more tanks than I do. I'm just gonna block here, it has this artillery covering this one, brings it, this other tank that was over here. Um, something that I hadn't seen was that I could actually get a hit on that tank last turn, but I hadn't seen it until later. I was told about that. <laughs> But it's fine and makes a neo tank to i think to counter this neo tank to send it here you know maybe scare me away and then send it towards the middle try to contest this uh neo tank making a, a bomber probably is not a good idea with all these anteriors out here and if he makes it from over here then that would um i mean it would be fine but then i can try to go for the middle it's very tricky, like, you really want to make the least amount of vehicles as possible on your one base side. This map is really crazy. A little bit of context here. Um, after the quadruple copter kill that I do against Star Flash, he was already saying, like, okay, GG, I'm gonna resign in, like, a few turns. And I was like, okay. And so we played out these turns, and now I started just doing some random stuff that is probably not a good idea. Um... Yeah, I start using some anti-airs to attack tanks, so probably not a good idea. I mean, I do take this out, I take that one out, bring the Neo tank. I'm going to start these captures over here, get a shot there, get a shot there. And this recon is going to be in range to protect this uh, this recon. I, I get super greedy this turn. I was like, okay, if he's going to re resign, then I can just do some random stuff. Probably not a good, not, not a, not a good idea to do. <laughs> I would not recommend doing something like that. You will see. Uh, you can just one one tiny mistake, as I was saying, is all it takes to lose a match. So these two antares are in range of this artillery. Uh, they're even in range of this tank. Like, yeah. Next turn is gonna hurt, and you will see. Um, this I, I also get super greedy here for no reason really just like trying to drain resources from him just super close from the two base like I'm so far away there's no need for any of this I can just be more defensive here and get these captures and be fine with that um, yeah and so <laughs> now I expose all of my antires and instead of going for my tanks now he is like okay I'm just going to take out all of your anti -airs. Literally every single one of the anti -airs. It's going to get market crash. I was so close to getting the power now, but wasn't able to get it. And boom, all my anti are now gone. I had four anti -airs. Now I have none. And there's a copter here. And he will obviously make another copter. In comes a new tank, kills my recon right in front of his artillery. And it's just gonna stand here, be annoying, and it's like, are you gonna shoot back? Or are you just gonna die to my Neo tank next turn? And he was like, oh. 
I just threw the game. I just threw the game. I was like, okay, should I resign here? Uh, I mean, I was gonna resign multiple times. It, like before, when I was when I had the little entire wall here, I was also thinking of resigning. This was another turn that I was like, okay, should I resign? I just threw the game. I literally just threw it. But I was like, Ugh, let's just keep playing on. It's fine. I, I'm able to get these two cities, uh, which brings me ahead on the property count. He's still ahead in income because Sasha, you know. And I see this, I can kill this tank, I can kill this infantry, and then I can shoot at this RT, which is the only unit that can attack my Neo tank, really. And also uh, far away from this copter. I thought of uh, attacking over here, but it was there was this copter. And I, I just didn't want to get my Neo tank injured for free, pretty much. Because I didn't have any anti air just yet. So I just I needed to make more anti air. It's going to take a while. I, I lost all four. If, if I was saved, I should have saved at least one anti air. Like, all of that was just stupid, right? I should've just, uh, like, fine, I can just go with all, all three, maybe, attack, and then just save one, just put it back here or something. And then I can at least have one to deter any more copters, especially this one. But, yeah, that's just a huge blunder. And over here I decide to just to stay here and do this little formation where I can take out that tank. Um, that tank had shot, oh, the, the recon. So I just kill the tank and now he he can't reach this artillery he can attack stuff he can attack with his new tank onto this tank maybe this tank onto this one if this tank would have been put on this forest then he could have then I, I would not be able to do this because then he can break through with his new tank and then the tank can attack the artillery for example but because this tank is not over here oh actually i think this tank came from this base so yeah because it went it went up here instead of here or something like that. Um, he cannot break through. So that is pretty nice. And this copter is like a blocker, just using the right units to prevent any breakthrough right here. So he's gonna heal up this artillery. He is going to get a free shot with that copter because again, no anti-airs. He's gonna take another tank out. He's gonna finish that tank out. He's gonna take out that infantry, just wiping out my unit count, bringing in more copters. He's gonna. He's not gonna attack into this. He's gonna bring the new tank towards the middle. Oof! And this is just like Star Flash skills right here. You know, like a tiny blunder. Boom! He identifies it and he knows what to target. And he's just a very good player. Um, he is going to start to flip these cities. There's only very injured uh, infantry after all that brawling and making lots of tanks. So it's gonna it's gonna take a while for these to arrive, and these are gonna take a while to capture. So that's important. If there was like at least one healthy infantry capping this or capping this, oof, th that would be even more GG to me. I get a tank hit there, like I, I get a tank hit with a neo tank. Uh, now it will be protected with the anti, and I get a first strike there, and then I go for this little tank sacrifice onto the neo tank because it was just enough to get the power which I use. I was like, might as well use it now or else I won't be able to get it like forever. And the important thing here with the power was that it, it injures all the infantry. So like this guy was healthy, was at 10 and was in range of these two cities. So that would have been very dangerous because all of this can like bundle up over here in the middle and start a capture. And I don't have that many units here on the two base side. Like I have the Neo tank, but there is an artillery Neo tank copters coming in. So injuring these infantry was a big deal for me to stop this from getting flipped. Um, potentially also this one or this one like from for going for this city. I was starting to be a little bit paranoid about that. So I was starting to send these infantry over here towards this mountain. I have to pull back from over here. Although I do get greedy and I go for this capture. The only place that it can be attacked are from these two tiles. And so Artelia is in range. These copters are just, are just blocking tiles. Got these two guys in range to start these two captures. Um, and so yeah, I, I start getting these guys in position to maybe go towards the middle. Make another anti air because the copter chain is coming. Another thing from the power was just like the fun strain. I think that's... I mean, it's, it's whatever, no? But, you know, it's now it's 18k. All the injured units get hit a lot. Like, there's this 1 HP, 2 HP. This one got healed up. Got 9 HP copters. Like, it's still good to have the power going. And I kind of like sacrificed the tank and made another one here because there wasn't a lot of tanks. There's these three injured ones 
and I already have these two. I didn't need more tanks over here, so I could spare that one and just make another one. Um, he's gonna kill that tank, and then the new tank is not gonna go towards the middle now. It is not going towards the middle. This injured infantry cannot pose a threat in anymore. He's actually gonna interrupt here, and it looks like he wants to just um, go all out onto my one base again. I blunder again here, I put this infantry here, like it went from here to here to try to reach this city. It wasn't necessary, but yeah, it, that was a free hit from the mountains with a copter, so it was a blunder. So now it looks like everything is going to want to go over here and try to flip this city, get the comm tower maybe again. Um, just like, I have this new tank and he's like, okay, I'm just going to send everything over here. It's going to be very hard for me to contest that. The thing is that though now, this is looking much better for now. Um, there's no tanks here. Look, there's no no tanks. This anti-air is going to get a free shot onto that infantry. Um, this anti-air has to not move six tiles, so I can, if this copter decides to attack from here, I can actually reach this forest to kill it. Um, I decide to injure this infantry, which is the only one in range of that city, to delay it. To, to delay any captures as much as possible, and I have to pull back. I am not gonna fight into that. If I fight into that, GG, I lose. That's it. So I have to pull back. I sacrifice these two infantry to injure these two. There's not that many healthy infantry again. Uh, most of them are being made here. I just pull back, use the copters as little blockers. They are just one tile away from the first anti-air. Um, also have to be careful with this copter and the only tiles available are to attack are like this one and this one, and the artillery can shoot at them. And I decide to make a stealth. Now, why do I decide to make a stealth? So my reasoning here was, uh, honestly, I, I don't think I've made that many stealths. This might be like the fourth or fifth stealth I've ever made. Um, so the reasoning is, I cannot deal with this Neo tank. No way. Like he's not gonna blunder it into my artillery for free, you know? Um, so one option is to make my own Neo tank over here. And that's probably the worst option because if I make a Neo tank, then he can just send everything over here. And this Neo tank will just be trapped here in this area forever. Like it will never be able to leave this area, the one base side. If I make a bomber, which was my second option, it could fly over the mountains in case he decides to go towards the middle, but he has three end tires. So, I mean, I do have three copters, so I can, like, sacrifice the copters to kill the anti-airs and then the bomber, you know, some kind, something like that. At least if the bomber can kill the, the new tank, it, it's definitely a better option, but it, I feel like if he decides to go all out over here, it wouldn't be that big uh, or that good of an option, because I only have three tanks to kill anti-airs, and there's so many tanks and stuff, so it'll be really tricky. So I decided to go with a stealth, because anti-airs cannot hit the stealth. So I can, it doesn't hit that part, you know, cells do kind of poor damage, you know, they do like, I don't know, five, I think, to a Neo or something like that, it's, it's, it's kind of sad. Um, but the only thing that can counter it is a fighter, and a fighter will take, I think, four turns. So it's two, four, six, eight, nine, two, four, six, eight, nine, two, four, six, eight, nine. So it would reach this area, the fighter, in three turns. So that means that I make stealth, he makes fighter. I move stealth, he, make, he moves fighter. I can attack with the stealth over here, he brings fighter. Then the stealth has to probably retreat and then, and then, um, or I mean, it can hit somewhere over here in the comm tower area and then brings the fighter. So it could possibly get two hits, like one in this area and then an, a second one over here in this in this comm tower area. So if he decides to plunge in and attack the comm tower area, this stealth will get two hits for free. And it will definitely be very valuable and very annoying for him to deal with because it is invisible, it's a perfect wall, whatever. If he can hit the Neo tank, then it will be of a lot of value. And if he, if he decides to go over the top or right, towards the middle, it can still fly over. Um, so that's kind of fine-ish. But in that case, the fighter could counter it, so. It, that is like the least ideal but anyways that was my reasoning i thought it was a good idea made an infantry artillery infantry 
uh, position these guys just out of range. I, I, I didn't want to be giving up any more free hits. Uh, it's just knowing Star Flash going for first strikes and somehow bringing that the game back. It was just like I cannot afford this anymore. No more blunders, please. And at the start of Star Flash's turn, he decides to resign. I enjoyed this match a lot. It was a lot of fun. It was also um, a match we played really fast. It lasted like just a few days, like three or four days or something like that. Um, it's probably on the slower kind of games in Star Flash's books, <laughs> but it is definitely on the faster games in my books, personally. Um, I think it was very interesting because just the broad like strategical approaches there was, the matchup in itself, the fact that Hawk was able to get a win against Sasha. I think particularly on this map, the 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 soft counter, you can definitely see it as we've seen it, like the vast amount of vehicles, the pressure that Sasha can put and the 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 drain the ch the charge drain that she can do. Uh, the fact that he also used it before attacks to give Hawk some charge made it possible to get some powers. Um, I'm not so sure like how determining the powers were for, for Hawk. It definitely, it definitely helps, of course. It 100% helps. Um, but I think it was all about just like the, the approach to the map and just like keep the brawl going, force reaction over here on the one base side. Then he invested everything over here to squash the two base. Wasn't able to get that roll to hit the artillery. Um, I'm not sure if that would have changed the outcome of the fight. Maybe it would have, because it was very, very razor thin, even the, the trade over here with the support of the this army going up. Uh, I honestly don't know. Maybe that role really did determine the whole match. <laughs> but I think this was just a very, very fun game. There were, there really wasn't like many mistakes to be made. Like I did a lot of mistakes, honestly, yeah, from the beginning. I could have maybe uh, used an artillery early on to lock this comm tower. That is possibly uh, uh, an, alternative, an alternative to consider the next time I play it. If you're the stallier one, maybe, or even like if you're Sasha as well, like maybe an artillery here by uh, by Starflash could have like locked down this comm tower instead of having to sacrifice units. That could have definitely be something to consider. But there's there's a timing thing there that's important, you know, because it take, it's gonna take two turns to put it into place and a third turn to start shooting, and maybe you need tanks during those turns. So something worthwhile considering. Um, but yeah, just a very interesting match and a very cool map like so dynamic and the fact you, you get to see the airport being so strong there's like different stages to the map you know I, I feel like that is really what makes a good map like a map will play this way by day i don't know eight and then by day 10 or 11 starts playing differently because the airport starts to come online then day 14 or something big accumulation of army very forced two base against one base uh, maybe there's a big fight like it happened here and then all of a sudden like the next I don't know, day 15 to 20 is like changing your strategy instead of I think here you go down you go to the middle like there's just so much that you can do you know so yeah I enjoyed this match a lot and yeah I hope you guys enjoyed it as well I hope you also were able to to learn some stuff at least uh, from my thought process and hopefully me trying to figure out the thought process of Star Flash I always learn so much from games with him, so it is always a pleasure, although I'm always scared of playing against him, <laughs> but yeah. This was a long one, hope you guys like it, thank you for watching, bye bye.